Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. It's been about 32 hours since a Trump-appointed federal district judge issued this astonishing ruling, essentially siding with Donald Trump and his lawyers, giving the ex-president nearly everything he wanted and more in the case of his clearly unlawful and possibly criminal retention of classified documents that are not his. Now, we're going to get to the details of the ruling itself, uh, but first, it's just notable this decision has come under unbelievable, overwhelming, and near-universal criticism. Law professor at Duke University telling the New York Times, quote, this ruling is laughably bad and the written justification is even flimsier. Paul Rosenzweig, a former George W. Bush official, calling the ruling, quote, a genuinely unprecedented decision by a judge. Andrew Weissman, former lead prosecutor in the Mueller investigation, who I will speak to at this very table in a moment, wrote the ruling as, quote, untethered to law and presents a skewed recitation of the facts. Even Bill Barr got in on it earlier today. Now, you might be wondering how a ruling went so catastrophically wrong to invoke reactions like that for some pretty serious and sober folks. One theory of how we came here is essentially the Trump view of the situation. The ex-president has made it very clear he believes judges he appoints should work on his behalf rather than on the behalf of the law. As president, he had a habit of calling them my judges and decrying those appointed by his predecessor as, quote, Obama judges. All that came to a little bit of a head in 2018 when Trump publicly attacked so-called Obama judges for ruling against him for his proposed restrictive rules for asylum seekers, which prompted a rare rebuke from Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, John Roberts. You go to the Ninth Circuit and it's a disgrace and I'm going to put in a major complaint because you cannot win if you're us a case in the Ninth Circuit. This was an Obama judge. It's true that the judge, John Tiger, was appointed by President Obama, but when asked about the comment by the Associated Press, the Chief Justice said, we do not have Obama judges or Trump judges, Bush judges or Clinton judges. What we have is an extraordinary group of dedicated judges doing their level best to do equal right to those appearing before them. Okay, so two views of how judges operate here. The Donald Trump legal realist, ultimately cynical view judges are essentially political cronies who rule in your favor. The John Roberts, justice is blind, everyone doing their legal best, right? Two views. Today, it seems like Trump might have had the better theory about his judges, at least in this one case. And it's so egregious in part because in the past, Trump's reliance on his people, his judges, has failed. The Roberts view of things has held. I mean, a bunch of Trump-appointed judges threw out Trump's bogus legal challenges to the 2020 election. That did not stop one Trump surrogate from publicly speculating. The Supreme Court justices Trump appointed would come through for the ex-president in his attempts to overturn the election in Pennsylvania before the election was even called. We're waiting for the United States Supreme Court, which, of which the president has nominated three justices, to step in and do something. And hopefully Amy Coney Barrett will come through and pick it up. There's no guarantee of that, Lou. So we have to fight this on the ground and make sure that we challenge no in every place we are. Now, again, Supreme Court, as we all know, three of those justices, the six in the six three majority, Trump appointed, right? They didn't intervene on behalf of Trump. We also know that, according to testimony from counsel to former Vice President Mike Pence, coup plotter John Eastman was telling people that conservative justices on the Supreme Court would essentially clear a path for the coup to take hold. Eastman, of course, was in touch with Clarence Thomas's wife, Ginny Thomas, at the time. So Eastman's telling people that if Pence had gone along with the scheme to throw out the results of the election and turn it over to rogue state legislatures, they would have been in the clear. He again tried to say, but I don't think the courts will get involved in this. Um, they'll invoke the political question doctrine. And so if the courts stay out of it, that will mean that we'll have the 10 days for the states to weigh in and resolve it. Again, these are examples of Trump people saying, look, these are our people. They will come through for us. Now, thankfully, again, it never got that far. But it is clear many people in Trump's inner circle and Trump himself believed fully, despite the evidence to the contrary in the election litigation, that the judges he appointed would act essentially as MAGA collaborators in robes. Now, that is where the judge in question today, Southern Florida District Judge Eileen Cannon, comes in. She's got an unremarkable resume for a conservative judge, right? She's a lifelong member of the Conservative Fellows Society, which has long sought to remake the judiciary as an arm of movement conservatism, a few years at a private law firm, 
and AUSA. She has not been on the bench for very long. She was approved, this is interesting, by the McConnell-led Republican-controlled Senate, get this, in the lame duck period after the 2020 election. This is when Joe Biden was president-elect, but Donald Trump was still actively trying to foment a coup. Judge Cannon is the archetypal Trump judge, known for her conservative jurisprudence, which is why, and this is another interesting detail here, when Trump filed this complete nonsense lawsuit against Hillary Clinton and others earlier this year, which, frankly, I had forgotten about until this story because it was so ludicrous over allegations, his campaign colluded with Russia in the 2016 election, yada, yada, Trump went shopping for a judge. He tried to get the case in front of none other than, drumroll, Judge Cannon, which is interesting. As the Daily Beast reports, quote, when his attorneys formally filed the paperwork, they selected a tiny courthouse in the sprawling federal court district's furthest northeast corner, 70 miles from Mar a Lago. They ignored the West Palm Beach federal courthouse. That's a 12 minute drive away. Trump's legal team, it seemed, was specifically seeking out a particular federal judge. Now, the plan didn't work. Through the luck of the draw, uh, this is like a lottery system of, of which judge you get, Trump's suit was instead put before a different judge rather than Cannon, who promptly threw it out, but not before noting this in the ruling. Listen to this, quote, I note that Trump filed this lawsuit in the Fort Pierce division of this district where only one federal judge sits, Judge Eileen Cannon, who Trump appointed in 2020. Despite the odds, this case landed with me instead. And when Trump is a litigant before a judge that he himself appointed, he does not tend to advance these same sorts of bias concerns. So Trump got lucky this time. He got Cannon. He went judge shopping. And again, this time, the DOJ case did land before Eileen Cannon. Now, at first, she appeared skeptical, requesting more information from Trump's lawyers as to why the case was even coming before her to begin with. There is... A pending legal matter under another judge, magistrate judge, Florida magistrate judge Bruce Reinhardt, right? That's the name you recognize, already overseeing it. He's the one who had the hearing about which parts of the search warrant would be made public and which parts would be of the affidavit would be made public. He's overseeing it, right? So Cannon asks, like, well, why me? But she seems to have gotten the picture pretty quickly. Last week, she took the unprecedented step of basically telling everyone ahead of time she was going to rule in Trump's favor before issuing the ruling itself yesterday, which, as we noted a moment ago, is basically the laughing stock of the entire legal profession. Cannon ruled the Department of Justice must pause reviewing the documents it seized from Trump weeks ago, essentially putting much of the investigation on hold, which, of course, was Trump's only real goal here. Cannon also ordered, quote, the appointment of a special master to review the seized property for personal items and documents and potentially privileged material subject to claims of attorney client and or executive privilege. Now, let's just set the table here. Nobody disputes that Trump or the people working for him, right, took the government documents at issue. And they do not belong to him. That's not in dispute either. They belong to the United States government pursuant to the Presidential Records Act. So they should be in the custody of the National Archives. So Donald Trump should not have a say in whether they're reviewed. They are not his. Furthermore, Donald Trump is not the executive. That's the executive and executive privilege Joe Biden is. So it's almost impossible to see what executive privilege there is to consider, not to mention the Department of Justice, which is reviewing the documents on the other side of this motion, is, unlike Donald Trump, actually part of the executive branch. So this ruling is basically saying a special master needs to be appointed to see what the executive branch needs to hide from itself, with one part of that executive branch being Donald Trey Trump, who is not part of the executive branch, in point of fact. It's exactly as ridiculous as it sounds, yet it is currently the law of the land, at least until the Department of Justice appeals and maybe appellate courts weighs in. But it's crucial to keep in mind that the law is not just some like objective thing card and stone out there, free from our political reality. The law, in a functional sense, at the level of human behavior and institutions, a law is whatever a judge decides it is, no matter how ridiculous, until they're overruled. And then in the United States, it's ultimately whatever five Supreme Court justices say it is. And if there were five Ginny Thomases or Eileen Cannons on the Supreme Court, it's entirely possible Trump would have gotten away with his attempted coup.